All right, hello everyone. My name is Disc, and in this video we have a near perfect 11 necrotic wake, and for the week's affix we are Devour. So if you're new to my channel, thanks for tuning in. This is mainly a Mythic Plus channel. I try and put out one video per week at least, and I do my best to kind of highlight my tips and tricks and my thought processes and how to min max each one of our individual spells. I also teach private lessons on Metify.gg. So if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one lesson, please go check out my services over there. And if you're interested in any of my UI elements, please consider joining the channel as a member. There is a member bulletin board where I post all of my codes and it's a great way to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. But I don't wanna to dwell too much here in the front. I wanna make this a pretty quick intro, but per usual, I do want to splash the talents really quickly. Being that we are a Devourer week, this is a perfect time to take Mass Dispel. Also keep in mind your regular Dispel, you can at least get two of those in that 15 second Devourer window. Let's see, I am running Life, I'm running Bulwark, Essence Devourer, obviously this is a Wheel and Woe build, and Mindbender. So the biggest change here is, this is my first video featuring the Void Wraith. I have been playing Depth of Shadows, which I think is pretty fun, but as I'm branching into level 12s now, I do want to take the one that just gives a little more output and people have been calling it bugged but i'm not too sure kind of where that lands with blizzard but one way or another it is doing more damage uh, pretty significantly so i am going to make the change for now and also per standard our atonement is going to be the biggest driver in our profile which means we really need to rely on our attack spells so here's a quick display of the damage overall. This does correlate quite a bit to our HPS. So looking at the overall, we did have an AUG, but it, um, I pulled 539,000 per second, which is the best number that I've seen. And you really need to play aggressive if you want to get high output, and that goes for DPS and HPS. But looking at the DPS spread, we see Entropic Rift and the Void Wraith kind of vying for first place with all of the others trailing far behind. This is what you want. The Rift is going to be passive. It's always kind of going to be in that spot. But the Void Wraith is going to have a lot of loss unless you're really focusing on your torments. I just made a video earlier today kind of highlighting that rotation, what it looks like. I have a weak card that I made to help track my torments. I have a little counter, which is really nice for helping kind of uh, keep on track. But then in third place, I see Dark Reprimand. And that's something I think you pretty commonly want. Dark Reprimand is such a huge spell for us. It plays off of Arch Discipline. Our Dark Reprimand also is going to help our Wheel and Woe. We really need to be making sure we're casting our Radiance to get these extra procs because of how huge Dark Reprimand is. And then, uh, yeah, we see below there Collapsing Void. So one thing with the Collapsing Void is you don't ever want it to collapse after a pull in. So I use a Cancel R macro to cancel it in time. And we see some examples of that in here. And then Divine Star, always want to try and get one per Shadow Covenant window, if necessary, if it's AoE. And then Holy Nova, I'm using that as an opener usually, and then I also use it after my pet window. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and clip over to the key. Five, All right, here four, we go. I'm going to try and do this in one take two, one. to not be in post all weekend. But on the rip, we don't and want to PI AUG. You learn the the DK is a really good option for us. Sometimes I hit the combustion if I miss my PI. <laughs> but here on the first pull, we go big. It's a full Hail Mary. We really want to play as many spells as it takes. And we have the gatekeepers in. So that is a really good focus for us. Noticing I have the timer of this attack on the gatekeeper's nameplate. And here's our pet rotation. Dropped a Rhapsody on my opener. Got my star out early for the damage grab. Hit a couple of executes. So talking about that timer on the nameplate, I was not ready for the second one and we almost had some deaths there, but thankfully we got through it with a Rapture. And there's a paints up on the tank back there just to help the opener. 
So looking at my cooldowns, always a good idea in between pulls. I have Rift, I have Void Wraith, High Prio. So Barrier would have been a great spell for pull one. That was a quick Shadow Melt to get that cast off of me. Uh, would have, Barrier would have been great for pull one, but it's still great for pull two. There is high spike damage here. Switch my targets to preserve my dots. Switch my targets for executes. And that was a really good 7 torment window. So now that combat's out, all I'm thinking is CDR. I really want the cooldown of my pet back. And for that first affix, as long as your pet or rift is out, that's really all you need. I was trying to hold mass for the boss, where it might come in more handy. And this pull here has quite a bit of spike damage too, so getting our pet out quickly is really important. It's getting a little bit low. Void Wraith Death, Rift, Penance. Looking a star for the damage grab. Rhapsody for the damage grab. A Radiance, as usual. I got two death resets and it looks like maybe six or seven torments there. So at the time of running this key, I didn't have haste on my neck. I do now, so it'll be interesting to see if I have more success with that final torment that it looks like I might be missing. But we are going for some trash here. Noticing KUI nameplates, I'm trying to find the darkest red mob. Set my focus early. Here comes the affix. I have my pet and my rift. That's all we need. Divine star early for the damage grab. Finding an execute really quick. A couple executes there. Six torments, miss my seventh. Still pretty good. So preparing for next boss, we're really only tracking one spell, and it's his vomit, his heave. You really always want something rolling there. You really want to shield the person before they're hit. I'm not taking disease to spell. There's our PI. And we see in party the targeted cast weak aura, highlighting who is being targeted. And without a shield, that took the mage down pretty low. It looks like we didn't use a defensive. But, um, so we usually get these half rotations and full rotations, as I'm calling them, where we have twice as many rifts as Mindbender. But the way this fight goes, I'm only running rift when I have my Mindbender. So in this interim, before the next spit, I'm really just casting Smite and Penance for the CDR of the pet. And then here we go, we're lined up for the next one. I'm selected. That was a Hail Mary for my defensives. I cast a shield on myself, Desperate Prayer and Fade. And really important to position that as well. So here's our pet with our Mindbender. I'm sorry, our pet with our Rift. Got six torments, pretty good. So now in this little interim, I'm just playing Smite. I'm not casting the Rift off, off cycle. Just casting my smite to get them both back together. I'm selected again without my desperate prayer. That is a perfect time for a personal pain up. And here goes our next Mindbender rotation. The radiance there was perfect timing for the affix. Everyone was covered. Picked up some extra executes on the adds. Always a good idea on bosses to try and find those when you can. Pink is doing a really good job here of pinging the direction we need to go. And for this, with a paint up on cooldown, I'm just pre-coding in Rapture, just kind of guessing at who's being picked. The mage was picked, a crit Rapture covered him for the win. And here's my last rotation attempt. I collapse the void early just to get the damage grab, keeping a soothe on the human just to protect the group. And boss one down, really without a problem. So on this next pull, we have one focus. The darkest red there, the Necromancer. So I do not have my Mindbender, but I do have my Rift. Let's see what I do here. 
Even the Rhapsody out. And in party, you can see where those single target attacks is going to go on main plates. So I could have had a little bit better play there. I didn't have my pet and I delayed my rift. But the way it looks is I didn't play my pet at all just to prepare for next pull. I could have played my rift sooner and got more of it. It also looks like I didn't play PI there even though my DK did. In I think I was trying to save for a mini boss. Here's the affix. Our standard rotation is going to cover it entirely. Yikes. Always watch for fears here. They are a dispel. The tank got feared, and if he gets hit in his back, it's not going to be good. Very quick dispel there. Here is our half rotation, so we started with a full. Now is just the rift, getting as much out as we can. That collapse missed. Ouch. But here goes mini boss. We do have hostile purge here, which we don't see often, but it is not a problem for us. Also, I have PI I want to drop, so I'm paying really close attention in party when my mage pops combustion. There's our combustion. There's our PI. And that one I queued in mass to spell. Since my mindbender window was just ending, I wasn't going to have the heals to take care of it. So something like mass to spell is a great fill in. And if you're noticing why my cast bar is glowing, that's my indicator that I have a combat potion rolling, which I I just macro that into PI, if anyone's wondering. I used to try and play it as its own keybind, but I noticed I was missing it more times than getting it. And just carrying it with your PI is a fine way to do it. Feathered the tank on the run-in. So he's going a little aggressive here. We want to make sure we have dots on the bigger dark red enemies. And in a pull like this, we want to focus the Necromancer. So I'm setting up my ramp. I also pop my orb that I picked up. Find star for the damage grab. Here's our radiance. Two deaths for six torments. There's another fear, but that is all right. And for this one, I'm going for single dispels. As long as you play your single dispel early enough, you can get two, which is usually all you need. Okay, so we're in a good spot here. My pet and rift are ready for next pull. Want to focus the necromancer. Oh, I forgot. So he goes to get those guys over there, giving him feathers just to kind of help the gather. Have my focus target already. And we have a little bit of a clinch moment here, so watch how dropping Rhapsody early. Zephyr, probably for the win there. Yeah, on the mage, I accidentally being something. And then that was a really good fear opportunity. I have all of our fear opportunities on nameplates as an aqua bar instead of gray. And then I have my fear icon glow with a bar showing the cast bar that we're interrupting. And I think that was my only fear bomb in here. If you want to see it again, just replay the end of that. After my um, after my window was expired, great time to work in utility spells. If you don't have output to give, stopping the damage is your next best thing. So I'm on the Marauder, set my focus early, drop Rhapsody early. And in this pull, I go for the Rift first. Really trying to get that damage grab on the lesser mobs. Divine Star early to get the damage grab. And then now that they're all dead. Going for the torments. Hmm. 
So not my best pull overall. I lost a little bit of damage there. I think my Divine Star was late. I think I missed an opportunity for one more Torment. But a pull like that with all those lesser mobs, you do kind of want to play your Rift first. So instead of playing your Shadow or Death first, go ahead and get the Rift out for the damage grab. You'll still get your Torments, but a little more DPS that way. A little more AoE DPS that way. So on this guy, it's really just a pump. We get one and a half rotations. So we open with a full rotation, Mindbender, and Rift. Six Torments. And now we just go for the Rift to polish it off. Making sure I have an Atonement on the tank. My shield last for the Words of the Pious. And then here is my half rotation with the Rift. I believe it collapses naturally on its own. Yep. And since I am without weapon, I do want to get this spear where I have a small problem upstairs. We'll cover that in a second. So on our map, I really just send on pole. We're trying to get this guy down. There's not too much of a threat as long as the whole team does their job. You could play Shackle, but I am not playing Shackle on this run. My PI target is the DK, but we hold. And then I'm also not doing as many half rotations here. The cadence of the fight doesn't call for it. There's our mass to spell since I did not have any healing to give. My pet window had just expired. So at this point, we're about to have slow ticking group wide damage. This is a great place for now your full rotation your Mindbender, Void Wraith, and Rip. I also use only one of my personal defensives, my Fade. It is a great spell to reduce 10% of that incoming damage. Preserving my wall, my shield wall, Desperate Prayer for this phase. Barrier since I don't have output. Gripping the Evoker in since he needed help. There's my shield wall. And I also went to Rapture there. So a really good rule of thumb with Rapture is always cast a Radiance first. If your group's atoned, your Rapture shields are going to hit harder due to your mastery. Plus you're buying a proc plus your healing. It's a really good sequence to lead into Rapture with the Radiance. And here I'm going for an 8 Torment window, but we don't get it because he dies just a little too soon. But I did get my Rift Collapse there, the Cancel R macro. I caught my Collapse right before he died, and I actually was the Overkill. So up here we have quite a bit of trash to do. The biggest thing you can do is make sure you're focusing the most healthy mob, which is a darker red per my KUI nameplates. And looking at spells is a good idea in between combat. In this moment, I'm noticing I have nothing but my Mindbender. And the Mindbender is enough, as long as we have a solid atonement ramp and a dot ramp. Setting my focus early, getting a handful of dots out. This is too big of a group for all of them. Perhaps see while they're all up. Pet, death, rift, penance. Divine star early for the damage grab. Working my radiance per usual. Two extra shadow or deaths. So here I believe we go for half rotation. There's too much left of this pull, even though my mind bender's expired. So here goes the half rotation. Just my rift is out, focusing on the healthiest mob. And here comes the affix. I have no healing to give. Master spell. So I have a full rotation at the ready. There it goes. And bender death, rift, penance. up an 
extra execute there in a seven torment window. Super thick. And so again, in a pull like this, we want to dot two, cast our penance to spread the final two. Our pet is almost ready. Rhapsody is dropped. The torments are in group. Shield is the last thing I do for the words of the pious. And here goes my Mindbender rotation. Mindbender death, rift penance, spam smites. Penance as soon as it's back available. Spam more. Death. Penance for six torment window. And this is a little tricky, no master spell, no heals. I do go for a half rotation though, just the rift, and it looks like it covered it. The rift, nine times out of ten, will do everything you need. The mindbender is just kind of a nice damage and healing amplifier to the rift. So just a couple more trash pulls here. Things to watch out for are people getting fixated. I think we have a really good grip example here. But not really too much to these guys. You want to make those cleavers hit one another. Also watch out if you get fixated. I think it's about to happen on the mage. Who's not moving. Grip him to safety. Uh, but this is just a pump. You want to make sure you play the, key, the cleaver mechanic. Which my allies are doing great. I did not use PI there. The rest of my team did. But we can play on next pull. And we'll still be in a good position. So I believe what I'm thinking right now is. I'm watching for the combustion. I want to play PI ace. AP, so I have it on boss. Inevitably. Need two dots, cast a shield for the words of the pious. Here comes the affix, so we definitely need a radiance. Casting it on the mage to make sure it hits all five of us. I am losing my dot here, let's see if I switch targets. Yep, switch targets mid-pull to maintain my dots. You never really want to recast dot mid-combat. You want to let your penance do that. And this pull has enough health. It looks like I'm reaching for another full rotation here. Mindbender and Rift. Six Torment window, canceled my Rift, got the Collapse. And the only bad thing about a second Mindbender there he is not ready here. So I believe I spend a couple seconds just fapping for CDR. Opening with two dots. Penance to spread the final two. And this guy has an aura in melee, so you definitely want to keep your melee atoned. And also you can see where that cast is going ahead of time with my targeted cast weak aura. Really good play to grip people out of the spit. I think we have an example of that here. I wouldn't do that to melee, but you can do it to your ranged. Spamming, spamming, spamming. Let's see if I get six torments here. Just not quite enough haste. I think I could have done one more void blast there too. Watch the mage here. I think he's targeted. And the idea is you want to grip them right after the attack hits. What I did there helps prevent damage. So we're fully at the ready here. This is my play for my spear, which I'm holding. Heads up, I start to cast it, which you can see, and I accidentally cancel it and it never gets off. So pay attention for that. But on open here, we want to go for a half rotation, just the rift, and that's going to help cover these bleeds. I got the bleed here, so I went for a partial defense, just a fade. And you'll see me miss my spear. Barrier to help the transition. Here goes my spear, and I can cancel it. So that's a rip, but we had a barrier to help the transition. Here goes our pet window. I'm amplifying it with Vampiric Embrace, just for the extra output. Five Torment window, here comes the affix. No healing. Master spell. So that was awfully unfortunate. We probably would have two chested there if the mob didn't die. But I'm going into a rapture here just to help get us back on track. Yeah, so if I had played my spear, 
if that ad hadn't died, like if he, like that was just one a partial second shy, we could have two chested, but still good nonetheless. So here goes a double defense, wall, and desperate prayer. I don't have any accompanying spells for my mindbender, so I go for a personal defense, letting my mindbender do its job. Double death on the end for six torments. And here's a good example of radiancing the mage because he's in the middle of the cluster. And a half rotation just to polish this guy off. We definitely need the healing. Repositioning just in case. And boss is dead. So rip the two chest, but timing this key with such room to spare, still good points. It's still a really good example, but um, the, the smallest things can stop two chests and missing my spear there, plus the ad dying. But um, anyway, we have to think on the fly. The best thing we can do with a spear here is use it into the Icebound Aegis. So these come pretty frequently. That is the only spell we really need to track the timer of. We want to overlap kills there. And then also that Dispel and Party. We can see where it's going ahead of time with the target to cast Weak Aura. The name of the game is Get Out Ahead of Time if it's on you. And if it's not on you, get away from that person ahead of time. I've done better moving there. Here goes the Aegis. Let's see how we do with it. That was my Javelin. Just to get through that shield. Here goes the Mindbender. Really trying to get a damage grab in between the movement phases. Quick Dispels for the win. There is a damaging mechanic and a haste reduction mechanic. So we want to get those off pretty quickly. Six torments for the win. Into a rapture. And the rapture here is not only going to help us with the damage, but it's also going to give everyone a speed boost with body and soul. And I'm not wanting to use mass dispel here, so I opted for a single dispel. But arguably that kind of hurt me there with the dispel mechanic. So I have a full rotation at the ready, Mindbender and Rift. Not good to press it though while you're having to move. So you want to wait until it's over. I did not do good there. I should have been a little more separated ahead of time. I got my five torments. Here is a double defense window. I have my Fade and Desperate Prayer Mako together. Makes it really easy to get extra defense and it makes it really easy to cycle between them with one button. And that's one of my favorite plays. You might have to play it again. But our melee was targeted and I knew there was only one other melee in that dispel circle. So in the same global, I gripped the tank out and dispelled the DK. The so PI just came back up. Boss is almost done. Seven torments for the win. And just for comfort, I'm closing out here with a Radiance into a Rapture. For the win. So that was my last 11. It was really exciting to have such a clean run on such a hard key. We had over six minutes to spare, which is ridiculous because all my other attempts, we honestly just timed out. Interesting to see what's going to happen as soon as the dungeon changes. But I think that was a really good example of an necrotic wake using, a, using my torment counter for the win, using void wraith for the win, really trying to prioritize at least five torments, aiming for upwards of eight with executes. And now that I have a little more haste on my gear, I think that's going to be easier to do. But thanks everyone for tuning in. Please check me out on Metify if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one lesson. And please consider joining the channel if you would like to try out any of my UI elements. But again, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, Disc out.